A sadhu IAST, sadhu male, sadvi or sadvine female, also spelled sadhu, is a religious ascetic, mendicant monk or any holy person in Hinduism and Jainism who has renounced the worldly life. They are sometimes alternatively referred to as jogi, sannyasi or vairagi, it literally means one who practices a sadhana or keenly follows a path of spiritual discipline. Although the vast majority of sadhus are yogis, not all yogis are sadhus. The sadhu is solely dedicated to achieving moksha liberation, the fourth and final asrama stage of life, through meditation and contemplation of Brahman. Sadhus often wear simple clothing, such saffron-colored clothing in Hinduism, white or nothing in Jainism, symbolizing their sannyasa renunciation of worldly possessions. A female mendicant in Hinduism and Jainism is often called a sadvi, or in some texts as aryika. Etymology The term sadhu Sanskrit, sadhu appears in Rigveda and Atharvaveda where it means, straight, right, leading straight to goal, according to Monier Monier Williams. In the Brahmana's layer of Vedic literature, the term connotes someone who is, well disposed, kind, willing, effective or efficient, peaceful, secure, good, virtuous, honorable, righteous, noble depending on the context. In the Hindu epics, the term implies someone who is a saint, sage, seer, holy man, virtuous, chaste, honest or right. The Sanskrit terms sadhu, good man, and sadvi, good woman, refer to renouncers who have chosen to live lives apart from or on the edges of society to focus on their own spiritual practices. The words come from the root sad, which means, reach one's goal, make straight, or Gain power over. The same root is used in the word sadhana, which means spiritual practice. It literally means one who practices a sadhana or a path of spiritual discipline. Topic: <laughs> Demographics and lifestyle. There are four to five million sadhus in India today, and they are widely respected for their holiness. It is also thought that the austere practices of the sadhus help to burn off their karma and that of the community at large. Thus seen as benefiting society, sadhus are supported by donations from many people. However, reverence of sadhus is by no means universal in India. For example, Nath Yogi sadhus have been viewed with a certain degree of suspicion particularly amongst the urban populations of India, but they have been revered and are popular in rural India. There are naked digambara, or sky-clad. Sadhus who wear their hair in thick dreadlocks called jata. Sadhus engage in a wide variety of religious practices. Some practice asceticism and solitary meditation, while others prefer group praying, chanting or meditating. They typically live a simple lifestyle, have very few or no possessions, survive by food and drinks from leftovers that they beg for or is donated by others. Many sadhus have rules for alms collection, and do not visit the same place twice on different days to avoid bothering the residents. They generally walk or travel over distant places, homeless, visiting temples and pilgrimage centers as a part of their spiritual practice. Celibacy is common, but some sects experiment with consensual tantric sex as a part of their practice. Sex is viewed by them as a transcendence from a personal, intimate act to something impersonal and ascetic. <laughs> Sadhu sects <laughs> Hinduism. Shaiva sadhus are renunciates devoted to Shiva, and Vaishnava sadhus are renouncers devoted to Vishnu or his avatar like Rama or Krishna. The Vaishnava sadhus are sometimes referred to as varijas. Less numerous are Shakta sadhus, who are devoted to Shakti. Within these general divisions are numerous sects and subsects, reflecting different lineages and philosophical schools and traditions, often referred to as sampradayas. Within the Shaiva sadhus are many subgroups. Most Shaiva sadhus wear a tripundra mark on their forehead, dress in saffron, red or orange color clothes, and live a monastic life. Some sadhus such as the Aghori share the practices of ancient Kapalikas, where they beg with a skull, smeared their body with ashes from the cremation ground, and experiment with substances or practices that are generally abhorred by society. The Dashanami Sampradaya sadhus belong to the Smarta tradition. They are said to have been formed by the philosopher and renunciant Adi Shankara, believed to have lived in the 8th century CE, though the full history of the sect's formation is not clear. 
Among them are the Naga subgroups, naked sadhu known for carrying weapons like tridents, swords, canes, and spears. Said to have once functioned as an armed order to protect Hindus from the Mughal rulers, they were involved in a number of military defense campaigns. Generally in the ambit of non-violence at present, some sections are known to practice wrestling and martial arts. Their retreats are still called chavni or armed camps, and mock duels are still sometimes held between them. Female sadhus exist in many sects. In many cases, the women that take to the life of renunciation are widows, and these types of sadhus often live secluded lives in ascetic compounds. Sadhvis are sometimes regarded by some as manifestations or forms of the goddess, or Devi, and are honored as such. There have been a number of charismatic sadhvis that have risen to fame as religious teachers in contemporary India, e.g., Anandamayi Ma, Sarada Devi, Mata Amritanandamaya, and Karunamayi. <laughs> Jainism The Jain community is traditionally discussed in its texts with four terms: sadhu, monks; sadvi or aryika, nuns; sravaka, layman householders; and sravika, laywoman householders. As in Hinduism and Buddhism, the Jain householders support the monastic community. The sadhus and sadvis are intertwined with the Jain lay society, perform murtipuja, jina idol worship, and lead festive rituals, and they are organized in a strongly hierarchical monastic structure. There are differences between the Digambara and Svetambara sadhus and sadvi traditions. The Digambara sadhus own no clothes as a part of their interpretation of five vows, and they live their ascetic austere lives in nakedness. The Digambara sadhus wear white clothes. The Svetambara sadhus and sadvis both wear white clothes. According to a 2009 publication by Harvey J. Sinema, Jain monastic community had 6,000 sadhvis of which less than 100 belong to the Digambara tradition and rest to Svetambara. <laughs> Becoming a sadhu The processes and rituals of becoming a sadhu vary with sect. In almost all sects, a sadhu is initiated by a guru, who bestows upon the initiate a new name, as well as a mantra, or sacred sound or phrase, which is generally known only to the sadhu and the guru and may be repeated by the initiate as part of meditative practice. Becoming a sadhu is a path followed by millions. It is supposed to be the fourth phase in a Hindu's life, after studies, being a father and a pilgrim, but for most it is not a practical option. For a person to become sadhu needs vairagya. Vairagya means desire to achieve something by leaving the world cutting familial, societal and earthly attachments. A person who wants to become sadhu must first seek a guru. There, he or she must perform guruseva which means service. The guru decides whether the person is eligible to take sannyasa by observing the sisya the person who wants to become a sadhu or sannyasi. If the person is eligible, guru upadisa which means teachings is done. Only then, the person transforms into sannyasi or sadhu. There are different types of sannyasis in India who follow different sampradaya. But, all sadhus have a common goal, attaining moksha liberation. <laughs> <laughs> Festive gatherings Kumbh Mela, a mass gathering of sadhus from all parts of India, takes place every three years at one of four points along sacred rivers in India, including the holy river Ganges. In 2007 it was held in Nasik, Maharashtra. Peter Owen Jones filmed one episode of Extreme Pilgrim there during this event. It took place again in Haridwar in 2010. Sadhus of all sects join in this reunion. Millions of non-sadhu pilgrims also attend the festivals, and the Kumbh Mela is the largest gathering of human beings for a single religious purpose on the planet. The most recent Kumbh Mela started on 14 January 2013, at Allahabad. At the festival, sadhus appear in large numbers, including those completely naked with ash-smeared bodies, who sprint into the chilly waters for a dip at the crack of dawn. Sadhu Topic. See also Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Further reading Topic. External links 1. Sadhus from India extract from
Last Free Men by Jose Manuel Novoa. Interview of a Sadhu Living Inside a Cave in the Himalayas, episode from Ganga Ma, A Pilgrimage to the Source by Pepe Ozan and Melita Tchaikovsky.